In the last movie of the series, you learn to create the animated propeller sequence using Autodesk Combustion. Autodesk Combustion is actually a discontinued product, albeit a very underrated and useful one. This last part of the tutorial is therefore addressed to those users who already have this application. If you don't, you can always use one of the earlier techniques to create the animated bitmap effect. In Autodesk Combustion 4, choose File Open. Browse and select the propeller PNG still image you worked on previously. When prompted, choose to open the image in a 2D composite, as you will need to work on separate layers. In the Composite Controls panel, set your duration to 30, if it's not already the case, and choose a white background to see the propeller better. Go back to the Transform panel when done. Go to frame 30 and enable Animate Mode. Rotate the layer minus 350 degrees. Disable Animate Mode when done. Make sure Playback Loop Mode is enabled and play the animation. You get one full propeller revolution every 30 frames. So far, the work is quite similar to what you have done in After Effects. Now select the propeller layer and add a motion blur operator to it. Notice that it has no effect on the scene. This is because the footage itself is not animated, only the layer is. In order for motion blur to work here, it needs to look at the footage and the layer animation as one composition. For that, you need to nest the propeller layer to be read as if it was animated footage. Delete the motion blur operator and select the propeller layer again. From the object menu, choose Nesting. Choose selected layers, in this case it's only one, and you can optionally give the new composition a name. Click OK when done. Notice the new composition that's been added to the project. Make sure the new composition is selected and add the motion blur operator to it. You can now see the effect. Set the shutter speed to about 3 for a stronger effect. Take a look at it around frame 11 to see it better. The phase value is similar to the offset value change in 3ds Max, or the phase value you experimented with in After Effects. Here though, a value of 0 ensures an equal amount of blur before and after the current frame. Finally, the sample's value is all about the quality of the blur. Increase it to about 48 for a better result. Adjust your work area between 11 and 20 to get a nicely looping animation. At this point, you could render out those frames and apply them as an opacity map like you did before. However, Combustion has a very nice toolset of paint tools that you can use to improve the effect. Not only can you paint color information, but you can paint alpha data as well. And so, instead of adding a radial blur in 3ds Max to help with the opacity map, you will use Combustion's paint functionality to that end. Go to frame 1. This is important in order for paint tools to be applied from the beginning of the animation, even if you only need a few frames. Split the viewport in two, this will make it easier to view the paint layer and the end result simultaneously. Select the main composite entry in the workspace and choose Object, New Layer, a dialog appears. Set the type to Paint and then make sure the rest of the options match your current project. Also make sure the layer is set to Transparent mode. Click OK when done. The active viewport should automatically display the new layer and therefore should display in black. What's more, right-click and set its view mode to alpha. This way you'll be directly painting on the alpha channel. Switch to the toolbar panel. Click and hold the rectangular selection tool and switch it to elliptical mode. Click and drag from the center out to create a selection. Hold shift down for a perfect circle. If you need to adjust the transform, such as position and scale, you can use the arrow tool or fine-tune those in the transform panel. 
Position in X and Y should be centered at 256, given the 512 by 512 resolution. As for the scale, adjust it so the circle encompasses the size of the propeller. You'll be able to adjust this a bit better later, when you start seeing the accumulated effect. For now, choose the Flood Fill tool, and switch to Gradient. Choose the Radial Gradient mode. Since you're working directly on the Alpha channel, all you need are grayscale color values. Add a couple of flags and make them range from white, left, to black, right. This is just a temporary setup. Using the Flood Fill tool, click inside the circular selection to add the gradient to the paint layer. The right viewport may need a refresh, so go to any frame between 11 and 20. You should be seeing the accumulated effect on the right side. Switch back to the workspace panel. Make sure the flood fill entry is selected. You need to change the gradient to have a sharper ring on the outside and more transparency on the inside. This would fit with the radial gradient you set up in 3ds Max earlier. Adjust the gradient flags until you are satisfied with the look. If you need to, go down to the ellipse selection level and adjust its scale. When you're done, you have your completed opacity map, which you are ready to render. Go back to the right viewport and set it as a single active view. Choose File Render. In the dialog that appears, choose the image sequence type you want. Use PNG in this case, but make sure it is set to color plus alpha. In the render range, click the markers button to render your work area only. Finally, choose a path and a file name, and render the sequence. It should take a second or two. Back in 3ds Max, you can now use this opacity map as you have before. except that it's self-sufficient and you don't have to add the radial gradient to it via a composite map. In this tutorial you have learned to animate a spinning propeller by looping a set of keyframes in a relative repeat fashion. You also learned to control the animation by speeding up or slowing down the propeller with the use of a multiplier curve. You have learned how to add a motion blur effect directly inside 3ds Max, and also how to create an animated bitmap to simulate the effect of motion blur on a spinning propeller. An animated bitmap looks just as good, and isn't as taxing to render than a blurred 3D object. That part you have learned to do in three ways, using 3ds Max, using Adobe After Effects, and using Autodesk Combustion. We hope you have found these techniques useful, and we'll see you soon.